With less than four months until the general election, Donald Trump has finally revealed his true opponent, and it's not Hillary Clinton. I'm not running against crooked Hillary Clinton. I'm running against the crooked media. That's what I'm running against. Sure. Sure. I'm not running against crooked. Okay, so he's not running against crooked Hillary. No, no, no. He's running against the media. He's running against he's running against us. Interesting. So here's the question for you, Donald. If you're not running to be president, if you're not running against Hillary Clinton, who is your opponent in a presidential race, why the fuck are you here? Do you even want to be president? You see, it's it's when he comes out and says stuff like this, it makes me start to doubt that he actually wants the job. Now, yes, of course, he attacks Hillary Clinton. But the problem is that he spends far more time either saying stupid shit or attacking the media for quoting him when he says said stupid shit. Now, all along, I've been saying that Trump had a pretty good chance to win. He's got an opportunity, okay? He's running against the weakest Democrat that the DNC could ever put up. That had to be pushed by the super delegates, by Debbie Wasserman Schultz, by manipulation of the media and collusion with the DNC, all to try to push Hillary Clinton to be the Democratic nominee, right? So she's incredibly weak, as I said. She's a flawed candidate. She's got scandal after scandal, some of it bullshit, some of it not bullshit. Um, and, and, and she's still the Democratic nominee. She's incredibly beatable by somebody who calls out corruption. Now, Trump started along that, and every once in a while he throws out a hint in there, uh, you know, uh, about corruption. Oh, crooked Hillary, you know, she takes money from Goldman Sachs, uh, all that stuff. Well, if he focused on that, if he actually attacked her on her donor base, being essentially nothing more than large multinational corporations, including some of the banks that crashed our economy in 2008, her support of, of trade deals uh, before she backed against it, um, her husband, you know, signing NAFTA, the job losses, uh, going after the, you know, her support of the Trans-Pacific Partnership, once again, before she backed out of supporting that. If he attacked that, if he, if he attacked her on that, what well, he could possibly win. Because those are winning attacks. Those are things that people, even on the left side, go, yeah, you know what? That's right. TPP is a terrible deal. It takes away our sovereignty. And it gives it the power over to multinational corporations. That's awful. It's a terrible deal. You could focus on that and actually make a really good campaign pitch. But see, Trump, Trump doesn't want to do any of that. Instead, he spent his entire campaign since the, the, the nomination punching himself in the dick. Maybe he can't help it or maybe not. Now, my question is this, right? of what he said about running against the media. Is this a slip or is this Trump just essentially rambling on because he doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about and has an incredibly limited attention span? Now, my answer to that, probably both. Look, he's got such thin skin, right? That if you uh, do a negative report on him, that's it. it you're banned, you're banned, right? In fact, he's banned most media outlets from covering his speeches and events where he rambles on and says stupid shit. For example, he called out, he called out MSNBC reporter Katie Tour, uh, who was covering Trump. And uh, this is detailed in a piece that she wrote for Marie Claire, where she told the story of a time that she was, just, she was at an event and she was tweeting out um, the time where protesters had essentially shut Trump down and he got annoyed. He left the stage, right? Now, she just live tweeted that. That's all she was doing, is just tweeting what was happening. Well, Trump got offended, and he actually went after her personally. Now, here's an excerpt from that. In the hours that followed, Trump took his complaints public, trashing me and CBS news reporter Sopan Deb for the coverage. He tweeted out, Katie Tour NBC and, and Deb Sopan should be fired for dishonest reporting. Katie Tour, third-rate reporter, and Sopan Deb at CBS lied now she also writes he demanded that i apologize but i didn't so trump decided to go further in south carolina 
pointing his finger squarely at me and launching a personal attack as millions of Americans watched at home. Now, his personal attack went kind of like this. She's back there. Little Katie, she's back there. Little Katie, what a third-rate reporter. Her tweets are a lie. <laughs> wow. Tur then writes that the crowd quickly turned to her and began booing, like a large animal, angry and unchained. It got so bad that the Secret Service had to walk me out to my car. So, look, let me stop there and kind of address something from the Democratic primary. Now, do you remember Nevada when somebody picked up a chair and then put it back down, right, at a Bernie Sanders, uh, at, at, the, at the Nevada convention, right, where Bernie Sanders supporters picked up a chair, put it back down, and the media was reporting on how that was somehow violent, how that was just another example of those damn violent Bernie, uh, you know, violent sexist Bernie bros, that we're going crazy and making people afraid, right? And of course, that's exactly how the media reported it. Oh, those Bernie bros, they're so violent. They were throwing chairs. Really, not one video exists of any chairs being thrown. Not one police report, not one person injured, nothing like that. So, but they, they continued reporting on, uh, you know, based on one account from a guy named John Ralston, who was there at maybe half the time. And by the way, John Ralston was incredibly biased throughout the entire campaign, the entire primary, tweeting about how terrible these Bernie Sanders supporters are, and he ended up getting fired for, for, uh, for it. Now, the thing is, the media, mainstream media, corporate media, ran with it and decided that during the primary, in order to elevate Hillary Clinton, they were going to paint Bernie Sanders supporters as violent and unruly which obviously wasn't true. And here's the other mistake that they did. They slammed the most liberal senator that has ever run as someone who condones violence based on the lie of John Ralston. Now, since they did that, the media has lost credibility when it actually does call out real violence at, at different rallies, for example, in Trump rallies. Now, this helps Donald Trump with his argument and ends up shielding him from criticism when his followers actually do violent acts. He essentially gets away with it. People don't take accusations of violence seriously because, once again, well, they slammed the most liberal senator uh, that was running in this race as some sort of violent, uh, sexist, you know, bro. So whenever you hear that, you're like, eh, eh. if Bernie Sanders is violent, you know, I don't believe it. I'm not, I'm not buying this. But no, there is actually documented cases of violence that happened at Trump rallies. People getting beat up, people getting thrown out. Not to mention what's happened outside of Trump rallies, where you've had, um, for example, a homeless uh, Latino veteran getting pissed on by Trump supporters um, and Trump coming out and saying, oh, you, you know what, it's, it's, it's because they were passionate. They're just passionate supporters, that's all. No big problem, right? No big problem. And all of that is because, well, it's the media's fault because of how bad, how dirty they did Bernie Sanders and supporters during the primary and how much they built up Trump during the Republican primary. See, and that's why the Katie Turr story hasn't really been that much of a big deal. Now, back to Trump, right? Now, there could be another explanation to him saying this stuff as well. It could be the fact that he's losing to Donald Trump. There are some numerous battleground polls, especially uh, one in New York, that shows Hillary Clinton crushing him by over 30 points. And there are other states where she's got uh, you know, double-digit leads in some, where she's got a small but comfortable lead. And nationally, the polls have also shown that Hillary Clinton is massively favored to win the election. Now, that doesn't mean that something else couldn't happen. WikiLeaks could drop a bombshell email that essentially destroys your candidate. But look, right now, that hasn't happened. And right now, he's losing. And he's losing bad. And look, this guy, he's got an ego so incredibly large, yet he's got super thin skin. So, of course, he hears this news. He sees all these terrible polls. And he says, oh, you know what, Hillary, Hillary, Crooked Hillary. I'm not really running against Crooked Hillary. 
No, no, no. What I'm running against is the crooked media. Don't trust the media. Don't trust the media. I'm not really running against Hillary because you know what? If I was actually running against Hillary Clinton, if I was actually trying, oh, I would crush Hillary. Big league. Believe me. Believe me. Well, look, he's got the opportunity to crush Hillary Clinton. As I pointed out before many times, she is a, an incredibly weak candidate. She's a very flawed candidate. She has ties to big money and big corporate interests. She's a corporatist, and a lot of people are, are in a very anti-corporatist, anti-establishment mood in this country. He could capitalize on that, and he could beat her using that. But once again, he decides that that's not the direction he's going to go, um, and so he's going to do what he's going to do, and he's going to lose. And look, if Trump can't beat Hillary Clinton, the weakest Democrat the Democrats could put up, then he's an even bigger loser than we thought. Hey everybody, if you like this video, then please like this video and share. And if you want to see more like this, then please hit that subscribe button below.